So if you've seen the slightly melodramatic uh, title of uh, this video, this cable here that I hold in my hand that will go in the trash bin later on ruined my life. Uh, I, I, actually, it re ruined uh, an imaging night, an astro imaging night, and I spent hours getting frustrated trying to diagnose issues that were actually due to this cable, but I was looking at a lot of other places, completely abandoned in frustration, and went to bed missing on a really good astrophotography night with the new moon. Actually, I have no idea if it was the new moon or not, but let's pretend so that I can be even more melodramatic. And it made me think that cables are something that we don't think of usually when we're in the hobby. If there's a point of failure, we'll think about our cameras, about our mounts, and of course, we'll think about our optics, the collimation of the optics, uh, obstacles in the light path, all that kind of stuff. But cables, we kind of forget about them. Once we've plugged them in, it's done. There's nothing to think about. They're just working and that's it. And sometimes that's no longer the case. And uh, we'll go into those details. Basically, in this video, I want to cover the story of my issue. What were the symptoms which really would not point me to this specific cable and how did i find about the issue how did i uh, debug it i'll also talk to you about some issues that i saw when i was a nina developer and we saw some uh, support requests coming about specifically zw cameras not being able to download images to nina and we'll talk also briefly about like cable speeds like Sometimes if you feel your camera is too slow to download uh, the images to your hard drive or to your ASI Air, and it's increasing the overhead that you have from frame to frame, therefore losing imaging time during imaging nights, which is a, an unforgivable sin, then this might actually do, be due to your cable or sometimes like the ASI Air. But I'll go to, uh, to the details in a bit. So let's start with the issue that I had with this cable. So where was this cable located? See this uh, red cable here? Uh, so it replaced this cable. And so I had my ZW ASI 2600 MC Duo connected to my PC on top of the telescope via this one cable. It was connected to one of the USB 3 ports on, uh, on my PC. It was running fine. There was no issue until that particular night. And the symptoms was basically I started to get imaging and then suddenly my focuser here, uh, I couldn't connect to it anymore. But that's the only symptom that I had noticed. Unbeknownst to me, there was an other symptom that I would have noticed if I had already launched my guiding software, PhD2. The guide chip within the ASI 2600 MC Duo was also no longer working. Immediately for you, that's a huge hint of what was going on. But for me, the only information I had was that this focuser was not working. And so with this, well, I did uh, the first thing that I could think of is I changed like the power that was provided to the focuser. It takes 12 volt as input. So I switched it to a different power port. I used a different cable. I even tried a remote a mobile battery to power the, uh, the focuser and nothing could make it work. And at the same time, anytime I was like doing stuff trying to move the mount around. I had my uh, device manager in Windows opened and it kept refreshing itself all the time as if it was like detecting and then abandoning the detection of devices. It was extremely frustrating. And so after that, I played with the USB cable that connects the focuser to the camera hub and replacing that cable also did not do anything. So I just got more confused. What is going on? Why is this not working? And then I thought of this cable. I thought, what about the cable connecting my computer to the camera? Maybe this cable has an issue. So what I did, cable was connected to the camera. I left it connected to the camera and then I plugged this end to my laptop. And then I connected to the camera. I connected to the focuser from my laptop and everything worked fine. And so I thought like, oh my word, my ZW, uh, ASI 2600 MC Duo is broken. The hub in it is no longer working. The USB hub is no longer working. And I gave up. At that point, I completely gave up. I'm like, okay, I'm not imaging tonight. I'm like, I'm too tired. I'll go to bed and that's it. Okay, so following day, what happened? I opened up PhD2 and I saw that the uh, chip, the imaging chip within the ASI 2600 MC Duo was also 
unavailable. And that made me think, I mean, it's possible that it's connected like internally via USB, but that was kind of weird. And so despite knowing that this cable was good because it worked with my laptop, I switched it for another cable specifically this red cable here, which is the one that actually came with the camera. And immediately, everything started working and has been working flawlessly ever since. So why? Why does this cable work with my laptop, but not with my control center on top of the scope? And it's simple. It's a cable of a, of a simple length. And so it has kinks in it. When it's attached, there's some tension on it. When it's attached to the, uh, to the camera and I think that's basically it. Because of the kinks in it, it simply stopped working. And so this is something that I feel when, whenever we are diagnosing an issue, especially with our devices like cameras, focusers, mounts, etc., one of the things we should do like systematically is replace the cable and see if it changes things. And I was close. I had replaced the power cable. I re replaced the uh, USB 2 cable. But I had not, I had tested this cable with a third computer, with another computer, but I hadn't replaced it. And that led to my doom and to wasting my life like that. Um, so yeah, this is really the stuff that uh, we need to be careful about. And if you're anything like me, you have tons of cables. All of those are USB cables and the one around my neck are a USB cable. And if you're sane, you will not wear your USB cables as a hat. Should I keep going in the entire video like that? I'll, I'll try. No, I will not try. <laughs> okay, so that was something to keep in mind. Your cable can be a source of issue. And that leads me to what I saw when I was uh, working on Nina development. And what we saw very often was some folks using uh, ZW cameras coming to the uh, Nina developers and showing like an error message that uh, occurred at the time we only had ASCOM drivers for ZW. Maybe we had integrated native ones, I don't remember, but they were showing a screenshot where you know the camera was connected. You could control the cooler of the camera. You'd be able to, take, to click the take picture button, but once the picture started to download to Nina, it just didn't work or it worked intermittently. And we found that uh, the issue was the flat ribbon cable that uh, has been provided by ZW with a lot of their cameras. I don't know if they still do it. This particular one came uh, with a red fat cable, but not uh, a flat one. So what could be wrong with those cables? I mean, they work. If I connect this cable to my computer and to a camera, it's going to work and there's no issue. But there is a reason that long cables like this one, long USB 3 cables, are thick like this. And this is to avoid electromagnetic interference. We're carrying in those cables USB 3 signals, and there's a lot of data that's coming through. And when we are setting up our equipment, sometimes we bunch a lot of cables together. So you can see in this particular example, my cables are not quite bunched together. They are separated by some distance uh, thanks to this cable management kind of uh, tool. Each cable is on its own without intersecting other cables. But if they're completely bunched together and twirled together or whatever, they can have interference between the cables and especially with flat cables that are not you know, good at preventing this, this interference, this can lead to issues. And so we can definitely have uh, issues with our cables, especially if they're not well insulated against electromagnetic interference. And this is all the more true for things like camera, especially USB 3 cameras that have a very high rate of, of data speed that is transiting through that cable. When we're talking about the cables that are connected to your focuser or that are connected to your mount, they don't use that much data. It's just like pulses of data, it's very low intensity. And so they're much less likely to have like disrupted data stream by interference. Uh, so that's why like those uh, small cables there that are, that are even flat, this is also a ZW cable, that's fine to me because it's made for a focuser, it's made for a filter wheel, it's made for a mount, it's meant for those applications that don't use a lot of data. The only things really in our equipment that transfer a lot of data at high speeds are our cameras and also our guide cameras. All the rest is pretty much low speed. So that it's our cameras that need to be 
very efficient, but also our cameras, they have USB hubs to the rest of the equipment, to our focusers, to our filter wheels, etc. So if the main cable to our camera has a problem, it can affect other accessories as well. Now, let's talk a little bit about cable speeds, because this is something that's obvious to a lot of people, especially if you are very familiar with computers. But it might not be obvious for everyone. Basically, if you look at a cable like this one, you'll see that the end of it is going to be white color. It's also on this side, it's a white color. And let's compare to the colors of another cable uh, that I have here, and the color here is blue. Also, if we compare the ends of the cable, the uh, blue one has a little bulge at the top, right? That, that thing here, the bulge here compared to the white one. And this is to be able to support higher speeds. So typically, if you see a cable whose end has this little bulge at the top, it means it's a USB 3 cable. It is a high speed cable and it can download images from your camera very quickly as long as your camera supports USB 3 and the device on the other side, so your computer plug, supports USB 3 as well. So USB 3 is fast USB. And if you're using planetary uh, cameras for planetary imaging or lunar or solar imaging, you absolutely do want to make sure that you are using the USB 3 cable for your camera and you are plugging it in into a USB 3 port of your computer or control system. USB 3 port, they are typically also coded on the ca on the computer side with the same blue color. And for information, if you're using the ZWSI Air Mini like I have here, all of the ports are the slower USB 2 standard. So those uh, USB 3 cables won't really help anything. So that's the rule of thumb. Whenever it comes to filter wheels, rotate rotators, uh, mounts, focusers, all this kind of stuff. USB 2 cables are what we're looking for. And because they're USB 2 cables, you can use the USB 2 ports that you have on your computer. You want to reserve the fast speed blue coded USB 3 ports for your cameras if they support USB 3. I have two cameras here and it's very easy to find out which supports USB 2 and which supports USB 3. This one only supports USB 2. You can see that it has a, a single square port effectively. And this one supports USB 3. It is blue coded and it has the little uh, the slot for the, the bump that we saw earlier in it. You can still plug in a USB 2 cable to it. It will still work, but it's not going to run at full speed. But it is to be noted that recently a lot of accessories have started using USB-C format. So USB-C format is this, this kind of little uh, rectangular plug that we see on most uh, Android phones and I guess in Europe on iPhones. And that USB-C is very treacherous because not all USB-C cables are equal with the same type of plug. Uh, some support only USB 2 speeds, some support USB 3 speeds. And it's sometimes difficult to tell the difference. So if we have a cable like this one, where you have a USB-C plug on one side and then a full-size USB on the other side. Typically, the full-size USB is color-coded, so you don't have any issue there. You know that this white thing, it is USB 2. If it were blue, it would be USB 3. What about cables like this one, where both ends are USB-C formatted? The answer is, we don't know in advance. <laughs> so it's about like trying to plug it into your uh, camera that supports USB-C. That's the case of player one cameras, for instance, and then seeing whether you get like uh, fast transfer speed or not. It's a bit uh, interesting. Also, sometimes Windows has a warning telling you like, hey, you've connected a USB-3 compatible device via USB-2. Are you sure this is what you want to do? Which is very helpful. Okay, so what have we learned today? Well, we've learned that first, you want to make sure to go down in the comments, leave what you think about this, leave a like on the video, it really helps the channel out, and subscribe to the channel if you're new, in which case, welcome. And if you want to support the channel at no cost to you and you're planning on buying anything from Amazon, like replacement cables, <laughs> or Agena Astro, or High Point Scientific, or First Light Optic, Optics, etc., if you buy those after clicking the links down in the description. It helps me out at no cost to you. And if you want to support me even more directly, you can join my channel as a member or join my Patreon as a paid supporter. It really makes the channel possible. As always, thank you so much, guys. This channel would not exist without you.
Anyway, going back to what we learned, we learned that cables should be considered as points of failure. When you have something mysterious that's happening with your equipment and involves electronics, the cable could be the culprit, culprit. Even the power cable, I guess, could be the culprit from time to time. We like to have like short cables so they not, don't get snagged into our mouth. They don't get snagged or shaken by the wind. They don't mess with our guiding, etc., etc. But that also means that very often they have kinks like that. They're, they have tension on them and so they can break more easily. And the breakage is not always visible. If you do find that you have a cable that caused you an issue, don't put it back in your piles of cables. You want to just throw it away because it could like save you a lot of frustration by just throwing it away and not thinking about it ever again. And we've also seen that sometimes, especially if it's multiple camera cables that have like high frequency data uh, coming through, you do not want to bundle, bundle them up together. You need to have some separation between them, especially if you're using flat cables because those have very little resistance to electromagnetic interference. And if you're using uh, this kind of cable that have a like, very round and fat like uh, envelope or whatever we call that, it's much better. Uh, but then the cables get stiffer in cold weather and that has its own can of worms of issues. So there's no perfect solution, I guess. Let me know down in the, in the comments if there is a perfect solution. And of course, we've learned or you've probably already knew, but about USB 2, USB 3, it's not obvious to a lot of people, especially when we go into the USB-C formats. And the final thing we've learned is that you should not wear your cables as a hat. It doesn't look very good. If you do wear your cables as a hat, please take a picture, post it somewhere and send it to me. And maybe I should fe feature it on the channel at some point. <laughs> but with that, this has been Quiv the Lazy Geek. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, join the channel, join my Patreon, buy your stuff using my affiliate links, etc. But more important than all of that, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and the clouds. And I'll see you next time.